Welcome back, Physics 30. So today we're going to look at, uh, continue on with MP1, in particular MP1.6, Photon Theory of Light and the Photoelectric Effect. And in particular, we're going to look at using Planck's quantum hypothesis and calculate the energy of a photon at a given wavelength or frequency. It's very similar to what you did in that little simulation, the photoelectric simulation that you did. State the experimental results of the photoelectric effect and use the photon theory to explain these results. Use the photon theory to determine the maximum kinetic energy of photons emitted, to, emitted from the surface of a metal or the threshold wavelength for the metal. So yes, that, again, that simulation should help with that. And discuss, discuss some uh, real-life applications of the photoelectric effect. So in 1905, the same year that he introduced the special theory of relativity, Einstein made a bold extension of the quantum idea by proposing a new theory of light. Planck's work had suggested that the vibrational energy of molecules in a radiating object is quantized, so like in a light source, with E equals NHF, where N is an integer and F is the frequency of the molecular vibration. Einstein argued that when light is emitted by a molecular oscillator, such as a light source, the molecule's vibrational energy NHF must decrease by an amount of HF, or by 2HF, etc., to another integer times hf, such as n minus. Then to conserve energy, the light ought to be emitted in packets, or sometimes referred to as quanta. So think of quanta as being made up of little bundles with each having this energy E equals hf, with that being the minimum one. Where f is the frequency of the emitted light, again, h is Planck's constant, because all light ultimately comes from a radiating source. This idea suggests that Light is transmitted as tiny particles or photons, which have a minimum amount, of course, uh, as they are now called, as well as via waves predicted by Maxwell's electromagnetic theory. The photon theory of light was also a radical departure from classical physics. Einstein proposed a test of the quantum theory of light, quantitative measurements of the photoelectric effect. When light shines on a metal surface, as you saw in that simulation, Electrons are found to be emitted from a surface. The effect is called the photoelectric effect, and it occurs in many materials and is easily observed, of course, with metals. And, of course, we can observe a, a few things. So we can observe it with an apparatus similar to this. And very, this is very similar to the simulator, except it was, uh, I think, it was backwards uh, to what this one is. So you have your light source shining on a metal right here. So here's your your piece of metal here. And of course, electrons are dislodged off. So of course, some of the energy from this light source is used to dislodge the electrons. And the remaining energy is the kinetic energy of those as they go from one side to another. Okay, so this is a vacuum. All the air has been sucked out, hooked up to a battery. And uh, what it does is it completes the circuit here. It can complete the circuit. So if I have a battery here placing electrons here, of course I can't complete it, but if I shine a light source on there, it causes those electrons to jump across here, completing the circuit, and therefore registering a current in the ammeter. So metal plate P, as you see here, is, and a small electrode C are placed inside an evacuated glass tube called a photocell. The two electrodes are shown connected to an ammeter. And a source EMF or a battery or voltage source is shown. When the photocell is in the dark, the ammeter reads zero, of course, because there's an open circuit here. But when light of sufficiently high frequency illuminates the plate, the ammeter indicates a current flowing through the circuit. We explain completion of the circuit by imagining that the electrons ejected from the plate by the impinging light flow across the tube from the plate to the collector right here, as indicated over here in the diagram. Now, that electron should be emitted when light shines on a metal is consistent with the electromagnetic wave theory of light. The electric field, or an EM wave, could exert a force on the electrons in the metal and eject some of them. Einstein pointed out, however, that the wave theory and photon theory of light give different predictions on the details of the photoelectric effect. For example, one thing that can be measured with the apparatus shown above is the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons. So we can figure that out. And you did do that on that simulation by reversing the poles of the battery and stopping an electron. That gave you an idea of what energy that electron must have had. 
So this can be done by using a variable voltage source and reversing the terminals so that the electrode C is negative and P is positive. The electrons emitted from P will be repelled by the negative electrode, but if this reverse voltage is small enough, the fastest electrons will still reach C and there will be a current in the circuit. If the reverse voltage is increased to a point where the current just reaches zero, so no electrons have sufficient energy to reach C, this is called the stopping potential, the potential to stop, oop, wrong thing, or the stopping voltage. And from its measurement, we can get kinetic energy max. So over here, I have electrons going this way, right? But if I, and my electrons are collected here, positive here, but if I change the direction of the battery so that this is negative, electrons will be blown off from the light but oh, we're like, we repel each other, so we won't quite make it here. So if I put enough electrons on this collector, so that when the electrons come in this direction, if they just, at the point where they stop hitting this, that's gonna give me an idea of what kinetic energy they have by reversing that voltage. So uh, from, and from the measurement, kinetic energy max can be determined using the conservation of energy. So the loss of kinetic energy must be gain in potential energy. So we have this. So that stopping potential voltage gives us an idea of what that kinetic energy is of those electrons. So that's how we can measure that. Now let us examine the details of the full electric effect from the point of view of a wave versus the particle theory of photons. So the particle theory, of course, we view it as little packets or a little bit of, or, of photons. Waves, we're just simply looking at it as, as waves. First, the wave theory assumes monochromatic light, so one type of frequency. The two important properties of a light wave are its intensity or brightness and its frequency or wavelength. When these two quantities are varied, the wave theory makes the following predictions. So if the light, so the wave predictions, if the theory, if the light intensity or brightness is increased, the number of electrons ejected and their energy should be increased because the higher intensity means greater electric field amplitude and the greater electric field should have more electrons with higher speed, okay? The frequency of the light should not affect the kinetic energy of the ejected electrons, only how bright it is. And when we think about it, that kind of makes sense. And when you're doing that sim simulation, you may have been surprised by a few of the results because it kind of goes away from this view. The photon theory makes completely different predictions. First, we note that in a monochromatic beam, all photons have the same energy. Okay, so the energy is dependent upon that frequency, which is, and that's different already. Increasing the intensity of light just simply means increasing the number of photons, but not affecting the energy of each photon. So the intensity just determines how many photons are released, but not their energy. So frequency, as long as frequency isn't changed. According to Einstein's theory, an electron is ejected from material by collision with a single photon. So the idea here is that if I have my metal plate right here, and if I have my photon and it bounces out an electron, the energy that that photon had goes directly to that electron. So the electron is ejected from, by interacting with a single photon. In the process, all of the photon's energy is transferred to the electron, and the photon ceases to exist because all that energy is in that electron. Some minimum energy, or W0, WO, is required to uh, just get an electron out to the surface of the metal, so to dislodge it from the surface, and that's called the work function, and it's a few electron volts. And one thing that I didn't mention earlier is that one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 13. So that is how we can figure that out. Because if we think about it, this may involve a little bit of uh, grade 9 science. If we look at potential difference or voltage, it's equal to W over Q. Or W is equal to uh, V times Q. Okay, And of course, work done is equal to change in energy or energy gained is equal to QV. And uh, of course, if we're looking at this, uh, a single charge of an electron is 1 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And of course, if we have a voltage of 1, 
the energy is equal to 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 joule, or we often refer to that as simply one electron volt. So that's where that comes from. For most metals, if the frequency of F of the incoming light is so low that HF or the energy is less than that, then the photons will not have enough energy to be ejected at all. But once it's larger than that amount of energy to dislodge it, the electrons will be ejected and energy will be conserved in the process. That is, the input energy of the photon is equal to the outgoing kinetic energy of the electron, plus the energy required to dislodge it. So here we go. So here's the entire thing. So of course, uh, that HF is really equal to the energy of the photon. So the energy of the photon, some of it is used to dislodge the electron. So we can put W there or WO or W naught. So to eject the electron, then to give it energy as it goes across the plate. All right. I think I'll stop there, and in part two, we'll look at more of this, looking at rearranging it and solving for kinetic energy, and we'll do a few questions. All right, we'll see you, see you soon.